Local 4 News starts now with a forewarn weather alert. Our top story at 11, you're looking live at the next chapter. Some neighborhoods still waiting to be plowed out after snow hammers southeastern Michigan. Crews working through the night to clear the roads, but in some areas, they've not gotten to the residential streets just yet. And that's one of the reasons for this. At last check, more than 200 schools closed tomorrow. A complete list is updating right now at the bottom of your screen and on click on Detroit. And at Metro Airport tonight, Flight Aware reporting 360 delays and 79 cancellations today. So if you have a flight in the morning, you know how the backups tend to work. You'll want to check with your airline to make sure it's going to leave on time. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Devin Skillion. I'm Kimberly Gill. Thousands across Metro Detroit are digging out from today's snow. Our team coverage tonight begins in Wayne County, where Pamela Osborne is live in Dearborn with how things are there, Pamela. Hey, Kimberly, you know, things look like they do in Dearborn, like they do in a lot of areas. Actually, you can see some of the side streets and neighborhood streets still need a little bit of work. We've seen people been talking to people all evening who've been out uh, plowing the snow off of their sidewalks and driveways, but this still needs to be done. Well, you know, again, it is Detroit. From the city of Detroit to the suburbs. Usually when they say it's going to be real bad, it doesn't be equally as bad as they say. The snow that fell Wednesday was, well. But this time, it, uh, it's that bad. You already know in need of a little attention. So hard, you got to knock it down or the thing won't keep running. Sure, it made a mess of things, the road mostly, but man, did it feel like a winter wonderland, the kind of scenic walk weather even little Maybell in her coat could get behind. Some were dreading the snow, but not Joe. I just love being out here, it's fun. Joe's the kind of guy you'd want living next door. We do each other's snow once in a while, but he's got a little one and it won't plow this. He dusted off his snowblower and with excitement started clearing off the snow from his neighbor's driveway and sidewalks too. When they say it's going to be six to eight, it's usually two to four. Didn't let me down. It wasn't all bad. There was plenty of fun to be had. This Dearborn Park was packed after dark with people looking for a good run on the sled. And don't worry, Joe, there's more where that came from. All right, so as you saw there, people sledding late into the night trying to enjoy uh, some of this winter weather, and there is more on the way um, in the next coming days. Reporting live tonight in Dearborn, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. Yes, and Kim Adams will talk about that in just a bit. Pamela, we appreciate it. So crews are going to work through the night to make sure your morning commute is as clean as it can be on the roads. Earlier today, though, different story. For example, this tanker crash on I-94 at Mount Elliott. Tanker hit a median, became stuck. Crane had to be brought in to get it out. Tim Pamplin has been out on the roads all day. That's just one of the things he saw out and about. Joins us now with a look at the current conditions. Tim? Yeah, it was a wild day, wasn't it, Devin, all yeah. in all? But I think we weathered the storm fairly well. I'm up uh, in Rochester Hills. Uh, preliminary reports, they got some of the highest snow counts up here. But again, as you mentioned at the top of the show, these neighborhoods need to get attention. It's been a very, very busy day. The salt trucks were out bright and early, salting and prepping the freeways, even on the side streets. Here, a couple of Troy snow plows tending to Waddles Road, but that didn't stop the crashes and the spin-outs. This was a big one. I-75 southbound near Crooks. This semi lost control, ended up in the ditch. As the sun set, the accidents didn't let up. This one along M59 had Macomb County Sheriff's busy. It wasn't just that vehicle, no, it was this pickup truck. And as I make my way around the live drive truck here, there's number three. The roads are deceptive. They look clear, just wet. But then you hit a spot of ice and it's all over. Snow plows have been busy up in Oakland and Macomb County, pushing around the snow. Well, it's got to go somewhere. In this case, it ended up at the entrance to a subdivision. Oh. This Jag driver needed a little help. Let me get back in here with you guys. This is a sight I've seen around town tonight. A little heave ho action as we all chip in. All right, almost there. Keep oh. going, keep going. People helping people. I live in the subdivision. He's a friend of mine. <laughs> Can not help him out? And he kept getting stuck in the snow. Yeah, so back out here now, as we pull onto Adams Road, that's Oakland University back in front of us there. It's getting out of the neighborhoods that's proving to be the trickiest part tonight and overnight. We're, of course, going to stay on top of this overnight and have the latest for you first thing in the morning. But for now, up in Rochester Hills, Tim Pamplin, Local 4. 
All right, Tim, good stretch right there. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get a look at where things stand with the forecast now. Or Warren meteorologist Kim Adams leading our all day coverage. She joins us now with a look at what we can expect for the rest of the night, Kim. Well, Devin and Kimberly, the heavy snow has come to an end, but the snow is still falling in parts of Metro Detroit, including down in Monroe and also in Lenawee County. We're watching a band of snow right here, right along I-75 as you head down uh, towards Toledo. You're getting a little bit of moderate snow, but the rest of Metro Detroit pretty much just seeing lighter snow amounts, and that's what we expect over the next couple of hours here. Uh, we're just going to look at mainly flurries and light snow showers in and around the rest of Metro Detroit. How much did we get? Well, quite a bit, anywhere from about five to close to eight inches. Ann Arbor comes in with the highest total we've seen so far. Now we'll still be getting totals in even overnight tonight. Ann Arbor checks in at just under eight inches, seven and a half in Royal Oak and Troy, uh, just over seven inches in Shelby Township, Ypsilanti seven inches and out of the airport, six and a half inches of snow. Now tomorrow we're not going to see heavy snow, but we could see a few scattered snow showers after about one o'clock. Uh, we still have some lake enhanced snow showers coming off Lake Michigan that could break off and make their way here to Metro Detroit. Temperatures will be below freezing at 8 a.m. So bridges and overpasses could still be a little bit slippery. And as you know, those side streets will definitely still be snow covered and slippery. Uh, and then tomorrow afternoon we will make it to a high of about 37 degrees with a little sunshine. We have several systems coming our way, several snowmakers over the next several days. And the best way to keep track of all this weather in your neighborhood and stay ahead of the storm is with our forewarned weather app. If you take your phone right now, you can just go to that QR code and download it right from there or go to your favorite app store, type in WDIV and you can download the forewarned weather app. Keep in mind, not just snow, not just rain, not just temperatures, but also school closings are part of this app. So it's an easy way to see if a school is closed in your neighborhood. Again, go to your app store, type in WDIV or click on that QR code and download the forewarned weather app tonight. Okay. Kim, thank you. Well, it's Lansing's biggest night. Power brokers and politicos from across the state descend on the Capitol for the governor's state of the state address. First in person address that we've seen since the start of COVID and the first with the shakeup that we've seen in the legislature. Mara McDonald is live in Lansing tonight. A lot of education talk, a lot of tax talk, at least uh, the broad strokes of that, Mara. That's right, Devin. Broad parameters. The governor's uh, budget address, however, is in two weeks. But tonight, well, as someone who sits on that anchor desk with you likes to say, we've got highlights. I am honored to stand between Speaker Joe Tate and Majority Leader Winnie Briggs. A tacit acknowledgement off the top, the governor's party controls all the gavels. Her top priorities, education, including free pre-K and millions of dollars for individualized tutoring for all students. I know we might have different perspectives here, but I sure hope we can all get around supporting four-year-olds across Michigan. Targeted tax cuts, like ending the tax on retiree public pensions and boosting the earned income tax credit and gun control, including universal background checks and safe gun storage laws. Hunters and responsible gun owners from both sides of the aisle know we need to get these common sense safety proposals across the finish line. Post address, there was bipartisan support for a lot of those education and tax proposals. We're very excited to, to work with the governor. We think there's a lot of priorities that overlap with, with our agenda. I think what we've seen from the first bills that House Democrats have introduced was around tax relief. So I was very excited to hear about the governor and her proposal for the working family tax credit. But there are going to be details that need to be worked out. So we have the money to provide savings right now. It doesn't have to be spread over three or four years. We don't need different tiers and different formulas. If you've got some retirement income, give the people a break. Back here live hashing out those details. Well, it's already underway. The Michigan Senate on its schedule for tomorrow, already talking about bills that would boost the earned income tax credit and repeal that retiree pension tax. Devin Kimberly, we're live in Lansing at the Capitol tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Sets the stage for what should be a fascinating term in Lansing. All right, Mara. Two parents are charged with murder in a horrific case of child abuse. Shane Shelton and Valeria Hamilton are charged with murder, 
child abuse and torture in the death of five-year-old Ethan Belcher. They're also accused of abusing their three-year-old son. Yeah. Police say the couple beat the boys and forced them to sleep in sewage water in the basement. Shelton and Hamilton were arrested at their home on Detroit's east side over the weekend. During the couple's arraignment, family members described the condition of the children. Multiple wounds. He has a, over 100 cigarette burns on his body. He had the frostbitten feet and he was missing a toe. Meanwhile, the three-year-old remains in the hospital for treatment for his injuries.